All right, Algebra 2 Trig Honors class. So just want to go over part three of the um, midterm study packet. So regarding probability. So 82 all the way to the, um, the last one. So we'll talk about some of the problem here. So determine if the scenario involved mutually exclusive events, then find the probability. So 82, you wrote a fair six side die and the die shows an even number or a number greater than one. So again, if two things that can happen at the same time, so that would be considered, uh, then that would be considered non-mutually exclusive. But if two things that cannot happen at the same time, so two, two things cannot happen at the same time, then that would be considered mutually exclusive. Okay, so you wrote a fair six side die and the condition is that uh, it shows an even number or a number greater than one. Well, even number, that means like what? Two, four, six. And also they're considered greater than one. So that means these two things can happen at the same time. So that can happen at the same time. So this one would be considered non-mutually exclusive. Okay, so this one is considered non-mutually exclusive. So for the event happens like this, so even number, so we got two, four, six, and the number that it's greater than one, well then that'll be what? Five out of six, right? So number greater than one, we do have two, four, and six, and also the number can be greater than one, <clears throat> it could be what? Besides two, four, and six, it could be three and five. So totally then that'd be five out of six. Or we can do it this way because that's the key word or. So that means we're doing addition. So two, four, and six, so three over six plus the other one. So the one that we have, which is the one that's greater than, the one that's greater than one. So then that'd be five over six. But you need to subtract the one that's overlapping. So the one that's overlapping, then that'll be considered two, four, and six. So minus three over six. So A over six minus three over six, then that'll be five over six. A jar contains five balls number from one to five. You random you randomly pick a ball. It's number one or three. Okay, so if you select a ball either one or three, and the things that can we draw the ball? It's one and three together. Well, just one ball, but you cannot have two results. So those two things cannot happen at the same time. So this one would be considered mutually exclusive. Okay, so mutually exclusive. So then that means the probability for selecting a ball, either one or three, then that would be considered two over five. So this one is just like one fifth plus one fifth. Okay, so one fifth plus one fifth, showing the work. And again, there's no overlapping, there's no overlapping part. So this one, it would be considered mutually exclusive. Again, the key words or addition. And 84, a shipment of 11 smartphone contains two with cracked screen. If show in a random order, so what's the probability that the first nine so have undamaged screens? So the number of total shipments for the smartphones, 11. So 11, select nine. So 11, choose nine. That'll be the total possible outcome. The total outcome. And the possible outcome, then that would be considered... Well, nine choose nine because two of those phones are what damaged with the damaged screen, cracked screen, and then the rest of those nine phones they are like in good condition. So nine choose all those nine good condition phones. So nine choose nine over eleven choose nine. So this one would be considered conditional probability. So eighty five, a car dealership has sixteen car in the lot. Unfortunately, the key to the cars have been mixed up. And the manager randomly grabs a key and tries to start a car. 
A salesman also randomly picks a different key and tries to start another car. And what's the probability that both cars start? 16 cars totally. So the first one, so let's start it with the, um, the manager. So the manager just grab a car. So 16. Well, we do have 16 different ways to choose the car. 16 choose one. And then one car is being selected. And then times. Well, if one car is already being selected, so that means there are 15 cars remain. And then the sale, the salesman, just pick another car. So 1 over 16 times 1 over 15. And then that will be the probability. Okay, so 86, 87, they're quite similar, but to look at that, 87. A meeting take place between a diplomat and seven government officials. However, three of the officials are actually spies. If the diplomat gives secret information to four of the attendants, attending at random, so what's the probability that no secret information was given to the spy? So we do know that in uh, seven government official. So sevens choose. Okay, so what is the probability that no secret information was given to the spy? We do know that and uh, three of those people are spies, okay? So that means the rest of them, they're not, okay? If the diplomat gives secret information to four of the tenants, so it's four choose four, uh, seven choose four. And then we need to find out, and the one that's considered non-spies, so the non-spies would be what? Four choose four, because three of those would be considered spies. So this one is quite similar to the previous problem, 84. Okay, so now 88, 89, 90, and 91. So a six side die, it's rolled nine times. So what is the probability that the die will show an even number exactly three times? Keyword, exactly. So a six side die rolled nine times. So nine Choose three. Okay, so nine, choose three. Or we can just stay that nine, C3. And the thing is that what is the probability that the die will show an even number exactly three times? So now this one is about the successing rate versus the non-successful, the non-successful rate. So in order to get that even number, so the probability of having that is 3 over 6 or 1 half. So how many times does that exactly happen? So 3 times. But the thing is that we want to roll the 6 size die 9 times. So that means the rest of those probability will be considered the non-successful. So the non-successful one, then that will be considered 6 times. So not getting the even number, then that will be 6 times. So the probability of getting an even number, one half. The probability of getting the non-even number, the odd number, then that'll be one half as well. So the successful time that happened is three times. The non-successful time that happened, then that'll be six. So nine choose three times one half to the power of three times one half to the power of six. So this one is called the binomial probability. Okay, so binomial probability okay so the thing is that um, it's about and choose R times the successful rate of the event happens to the number of times and then times the non-successful rate of the rest of the time that the non-successful rate would happen. So then that would be M minus R. Okay, so now let's take a look at that. The other one, a test consists of seven true or false questions. A student who's forgot to study guess randomly on every question. So what's the probability that the student answer exactly four questions correctly?
So your test consists with seven, seven questions, okay? Seven true or false questions. So seven, choose four. So four questions exactly right. So the truth or false probability. So then that'd be one half. So one half to the power of four. And then one half, the one that he got wrong. And then one half to the power of three. Okay, so 90 is quite similar, and 91 is also quite similar, okay? Okay, so that's it. Make sure that you guys watch all those three parts of the video for the midterm study packet in case that's something you were forgetting or things that you don't remember exactly or you're not quite sure what to do. So take a look at those. Make sure that you rewind the video or just focus on the one that you have a hard time to deal with. All right, so I'll see you guys next time. Take care.